One of the biggest challenges of building a full stack web application is managing complexity. If you're building a serious product, you likely have multiple front end applications that communicate with a back end, that share interfaces with multiple team members that need to collaborate efficiently. Today, we're going to look at NX from Narwhal, a tool that can dramatically simplify the way you organize, test, and share code between multiple JavaScript applications. The tool itself is based on the best practices developed by companies like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook that operate large scale applications across thousands of developers with mono repos. But you don't need to be operating at Google scale to see the benefits of NX. It can be a very powerful tool for projects of all sizes. So why do big companies like to manage their code in mono repos? Or in other words, use a single code base to manage multiple apps and libraries. The simple answer is that this approach helps manage complexity by applying best practices organization-wide. This delivers consistency and predictability in your code, while also maximizing the ability to share code between projects. But you can't just put all of your code in a single repo and expect to reap the benefits. You need the right tooling in place to test, build, and deploy your apps at scale. And that's where NX comes in. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll look at how complexity can grow very quickly in a full stack project. We'll build two front-end React applications along with a shared node backend using Express. On top of that, we'll add multiple shared libraries that can be used by all three of these apps. Let's go ahead and create a new NX workspace to see how it can help us manage a project like this. From the command line, run npx create nx workspace, followed by your organization or product name. This will give us an empty workspace, and we'll be writing most of our code in the apps and libs directories. Right out of the gate, nx is going to help you separate your shared code from your application code. For example, you might have two front-end applications, one for your customers and one for your employees. Those apps would live in the apps directory, but they might share common UI elements that would go in the libs directory. So this works really well when you have a design system where you share common UI elements across multiple apps. But you might also have a backend app that gets deployed to a node server. And if you're using TypeScript, you'll likely want to share interfaces between your front-end and back-end code without having to duplicate and regenerate that code. Those interfaces can also live in the libs directory and be used reliably throughout a large application. Let's go ahead and imagine that we're building a product for a travel company. And we have a team of React engineers assigned to the front-end customer-facing web application. In NX, we can opt into framework-specific tooling, so we'll go ahead and do that now for React. We can install it with NPM, then we'll run NX generate React application and give it a name of booking. This command will prompt us with a series of questions. We'll go ahead and select styled components, and then we'll select yes to routing to automatically set up React Router. You can find the app in the apps directory, along with a folder for end-to-end -end testing configured with Cypress. The entire app configuration is handled for you automatically, so you can hit the ground running by building features and writing tests. We can serve the app locally by running nx serve booking. That'll give us the app running in the browser, or we can run our unit tests by running nx test booking, and that will run our jest test suite. And we can also run nx e to e to run our Cypress end to end tests for this app. Now having this modern tooling is really nice, but the most powerful benefits of NX start to kick in as your app grows in complexity. At this point, we just have a single customer facing React app, but let's imagine we have a separate team of developers who are working on an internal admin app for managing customer bookings. But this development team has a different set of opinions and they have no need for React Router. So we'll go ahead and run the same generate app command that we ran earlier, this time giving it a name of admin. And what we'll find is a second app in the apps directory with its own TypeScript configuration and its own set of end-to-end -end tests. Now at this point, we have a mono repo with two individual applications in it. But one of the complaints you might hear about mono repos is that they're slow because you have to build and test everything together every time there's a change. But that's not the case with a tool like NX because it has a full understanding of your dependency graph, which means it can build and test only the parts of your application that are actually affected by code changes. If we look at the git master branch, you can see we have a clean working directory with no changes. If we run nx affected depth graph, it will bring up a visualization of this project's dependency graph. Currently, everything is outlined in black because we're in a clean working directory, so the code is stable and unaffected by change. But if we go into the source code for one of our React apps and make a change, you'll notice that it's now highlighted in red. And because NX knows which apps are affected by change in the current branch, we can test and build those in isolation. And this is what Narwhal means when they talk about developing like Google. Because a company like Google might have thousands of apps under a single mono repo, and the only way to operate them at scale is to understand what apps are affected by change. If you look at the NX CLI commands in the documentation, you'll see a bunch of them that are prefixed by affected. These commands allow teams to work simultaneously on several apps or libraries and be able to build and test them in isolation without having to worry about everything else that's going on in the mono repo. This is especially important when you start talking about code that might affect multiple apps. We can demonstrate that in NX by generating a TypeScript library that will be shared between both front-end apps. 
We'll go ahead and call this our utilities library. And because I use the default schematic, it's just going to generate a vanilla TypeScript project, but you can generate framework specific libraries as well. Now, another feature I wanna point out before we go any further is that you have the option to add tags to your libraries. This part is completely optional, but tags allow you to control which types of apps can take this library as a dependency. For example, you might have a front-end shared library that touches the DOM that you wouldn't want to be used by a node project. So if a back-end developer tries to use this library as a dependency, they will get a linting error that will tell them it's a bad idea. At this point, we'll go into the source code for our utilities library, and I'll export a variable called unicorn rocket that contains some emoji characters because our design team said we need to show these characters on every single homepage of every app throughout the entire company. Now, the awesome thing about NX is that it makes code sharing dead simple. At the beginning of this video, we set up this workspace with an organization name, and we can now import all of our shared code from that namespace, starting with the at symbol. All the configuration is done for us, so all we need to do is import the code that we want to use. We'll start by doing that in the booking app, and then we'll do the same thing in the admin app. So now we have two front-end JavaScript apps sharing a common set of utilities. Now the really amazing thing is that NX will keep track of all of the apps that depend on the shared library. Let's just imagine that our design team comes to us and says that we need to add an additional emoji to the string. If we make that change on a clean git branch and then go back to the dependency diagram, we can see exactly which apps are affected by the change. So even though we didn't actually change anything on the main front-end applications, they'll still be highlighted in red because they depend on that utilities library which did change. Now at this point we've only been talking about front-end code, but NX can also handle server-side node projects with first-class support for Nest and Express. In this demo we'll go ahead and use Express, and we can opt into that tooling by installing it with NPM. And now we can use NX to generate a new Express app for our mono repo. We'll go ahead and give it a name of server, and its responsibility is to fetch items from the database related to customer bookings. This adds another app to the apps directory, but this time without end-to-end -end testing because it's a back-end project. Now, one of the most common things to share between your front-end and back-end code are your TypeScript interfaces. For example, your back-end might read some data from a database and then pass it along to your front-end, so you use a TypeScript interface to ensure that data always maintains a consistent shape and also provide IntelliSense to all developers in the organization. What I'm doing now is creating another NX library, and then I'm going to add a TypeScript interface to it called Reservation. By putting this code in a shared library, we can now use it in any one of our front-end or back-end apps. And on top of that, we can leverage the dependency graph to figure out exactly which apps depend on this data type. So if this interface ever changes, then you know exactly which apps to test, to build, and ultimately deploy to your production server. So there's a lot of obvious benefits to a tool like NX, things like modern testing tools like Cypress and Jest, a dependency graph that will help you scale a mono repo to an infinitely large team, as well as task runners and code generators to keep your project organized. And the end result is a set of tools that will help you develop like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, giving your organization a predictable way to operate complex web applications at scale. Check out the full tutorial on nx.dev to learn more.